Hello, Obophiles! Today, we're learning the tune Lightly Row, which is a very important tune to talk about form. And also just to make sure that we are comfortable going from tonic to dominant in major. If you need a review on what those are, make sure to check out the description below for some reminders or other tutorial videos that can help you. Okay, so we're going to talk about the melody, I'll teach you the bass line, I'm going to give you some tips, and at the end there's even a track, an accompaniment track, that you can use to practice the melody and getting really good pitch and intonation as well as style in your playing. Alright, so the first thing you want to do when learning a tune is listen to it. So, here we go. So now that we've heard it, we can understand a little bit more about the tune as we're going to learn it. Make sure that you're able to sing the tune before going to the next step. If you need to go back and rewind the video a few times and listen to it again, make sure that you're able to sing the melody at least. And also if you can, sing the harmony parts and bass line before we get into playing it on the oboe. But let's say you've already got that under control. So let's start learning it. We're going to play this tune in D major, but we don't start on D. We start up here, so we need to figure out what note that is first. Now, it's important that you understand what fingerings we're going to be using. So we're going to be using these fingerings here. The only notes you need for the melody are the D major notes, starting on Do, Re, Mi, Fa, and Sol. So let's organize this tune a little bit before we start learning the first chunk. Because there's three main chunks that's going to make this song a lot easier to understand. Notice that we have the beginning part that goes like this. And the style is pretty upbeat and peppy, right? And it even has some parts that are the same within that chunk. It's like a box within a box. And then the second part goes like this. Now this part, the style changes, it's long, connected, only to return to something similar to the first part, like this. So we call these sections A, B, and A prime, where we can organize them in three distinct sections. Okay, so let's learn the A section. So try that by yourself. Let's try it a little slower so you can follow along with me. Now you may want to pause the video to work that out or rewind it so you can hear it again. The next section So notice that there are two halves of this A section, and they start the same way. You might need to rewind it and review that part, or just try it again. You can always slow the video down on the YouTube player as well. The next section starts on the dominant function, which is kind of cool. We haven't had that before. And remember that we want to change the style here. So now we're playing long and connected. Or I encourage you to pause, so here it is again slower so you can play with me, or I encourage you to pause the video after hearing it and just try to work it out on your own. And finally, we have the A prime section, which is almost the same as the A section, but a little different and also much shorter. And here it is again a little slower, so you can pause it and work it out, 
or play along with me. So those are the three sections of the melody of Hot Cross, uh, not Hot Cross Buns, Lightly Row. And once you have the melody, it's important to also understand the bass line. So take a minute, review those little chunks until you can put it all together, and it should sound like this. You can play along with me, I'll play a little slower, or you can pause it and work it out for yourself. Always remember to be tapering those note endings, as always, using that top lip. And if you need to review that, don't forget to check out the first Oboe 101 video I ever made for this series, where it talks about controlling the reed. Okay, so now that we've got the melody down, it's time to learn the bass line. Now it's important to know the bass line, because eventually we're going to want to play this with our friends, and be able to improvise and keep the tune going for more than like 10 seconds at a time. So hopefully you're able to sing it in your head. If you need help with this, I am taking students always so we can kind of work together and get into more detailed oriented work with this. And the link to that is in the description below. And I wish you guys luck learning this tune. This is a really wonderful tune. We learned it today in D major, but once you've mastered it, move it around into 12 keys. Play it in E major, maybe next week. And then maybe the next day you could try F major. And if you're feeling really adventurous, you could try F sharp major. But take ownership over the tune. And remember, if this video helped you, to subscribe and hit the like button below. And of course, when in doubt, play beautifully.